watching the Marlene Cox Show. Finally, a show for models about models. Well, welcome back to the Marlene Cox Show. I'm telling you, happy Wednesday, the last Wednesday in the month. Well, welcome to the Marlene Cox Show. You know, we're going to title for this uh, our show today. It's our guess what, guys? It's our it's our season finale. So this will be our season's finale, and we will be back in August for September. You'll start seeing this air again in September, but we'll keep you abreast of where we're going. But this is our season finale, and guess what it is? It's reading is fundamental. Fashion must read. And we're going to talk about, we're going to give you a homework assignment before we go off of the air uh, for this season. But I'm so happy. But before we get into that, let's talk about some things that are going to be good and relates to reading. Why we read, why we read in the fashion in the fashion and beauty and entertainment industry. And one of the things I want to share with you today as some inspiration about keep calm and read a book. I mean, that's one of the things, you know, get, you know, get up on a tree, go down to the park, get yourself a book and read it. And then I want you to also share this with you. I do believe something is very magical can happen when you just read a good book. So let's get started with the Marlon Cox Show. Hey, Valencia, our host is coming in. How are you hey. doing today? And we're, we're going to go ahead and get started today on the, our, our season finale. Reading is fundamental. I'm going to repeat that. Fashion must read. So of all the most amazing and incredible things can be found on the Internet. You know, a lot of things are found on the Internet, right? Quick and easy because we live in what we call a right now culture, time and in, in history. We need goods and services. What? everything immediately, even when it comes to information, rather than researching, like I had to do, I had to go through encyclopedias when I was coming up to do my research and dictionaries and books uh, and pursuing thoughts through books in the library or Barnes and Noble, we Google the information or we chat GPT it. Uh, the information, you know, AI, we do that kind of stuff to, for the, to get the information. You know, what did I say? Everything is an instant thing. But for this summer, we're going to sit back in our industry, fashion, beauty, and entertainment, and we're going to talk about some books. Uh, while most of this is the time that we live in every now and then, we should unplug, you know, unplug and read a book, a book of uh, interest to us or related to our profession. Did you hear what I say? Books that are interested to, interested to us or related to our industry. As we get ready for the summer vacation and spending some time away from where school, work, you know, or just being around the house, I have put together um, today, along with the, the team, the team from the, My, the Marlene Cox Show have put together a reading list of books that I'm highly recommending reading during your downtown. So we're gonna call it the Marlene Cox Show um, list. So, you know, so go look at that list. It's gonna be up on our on, on our um, YouTube, the Marlene Cox list. And, and me and Valencia are gonna make sure that goes up so that you guys can continue to see that list in case you forget. So today we're going to provide some reading suggestions for you, the world of fashion. So let's see what enjoyable insights we can suggest to you to you reading to your reading pleasure okay so oh, i guess we're going to took it up <laughs> uh, for your reading pleasure so what we're going to do and we're going to bring valencia going to come back in and we're going to talk about some of those things that we're going to lead in hey valencia how are you doing today i know well. excited about uh you're excited about our season finale as we get ready to talk about some books of interest that, um, you know, in the fashion industry, beauty industry and entertainment, we need to do more of what we don't do a lot of is more reading, reading about our industry to, be, to have that expertise. You know, we always say on this show and we say it in Maya, Maya uh, and talent agency, you know, it's not just about your looks. It's not just about all of that. It's also about your intellect. How much reading did you do? When clients want to take you out into the field, they're going to talk about 
fashion and designers and they want to know what you know about different things so we're going to give you a list of books that we're going to be talking about that's going to pique your interest for the summer and guess what if you go to the marlene cox show youtube channel and if you have some suggestions put your books in there subscribe and put a couple of books in there and we'll get our uh, social media people to kind of list some of your suggestions for the summer so we're going to go ahead and get started uh work um you know there was a commercial year ago you remember that commercial many many years ago rachel sang the jingle um reading is fundamental it was an ad campaign that stressed the importance for kids reading um for um to, to, you know, more profoundly you know we need to read and they say kids but i think as adults as we open the show today but let's say, remember we said we're living in a fast-paced world and everything let me google it let me ai it let me do this just to get uh, you know you put an answer in there and an ai going to shoot it out to you but you haven't read the total information and uh, we need to be doing more of those type of things because of those um, those campaigns. Um, yes, it was the center of school, but the message rang true across the, the broad the board. Wherever you're doing in life, work, pleasure, et cetera, you must read. You have to read. I don't care what figure, uh, field you go into. Uh, definitely, if you're going into law, you know you're going to have to be reading. If you're going into finance, you say you're going to be an accountant. There's reading that goes with that so you can understand. If you're going into whatever you're going into, if you're doing contracts, if you're working in corporate America, if you're working in, uh, in the government, whether it's state uh, or local or federal, you're going to have to read to get through some things. So this summer to help um, you know, really get into your reading. And I find myself too, I'm going to do some reading, Valencia, because one of the things I found this year, because I haven't been reading as much, I, 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 I stumble sometimes. I do certain things that by reading your, your, your relationships with words come empowered. So it's so important that we read. So I, I'm going to be doing my part too. Um, whatever you're doing in life, work or pleasure, you must read. So what does that have to do with modeling and entertainment okay and i'm going to ask you valencia this uh, what my answer would be just like any profession you want to stay current on what's going on on how to improve yourself so you must read so what do you think about that thought we just said before we get into the the what you're going to go to what do you think about reading um being fundamental to everything that we do in life yeah, i think reading is definitely important uh, keeps you abreast on things that you need to know, whatever you're trying to learn about. You know, if you read something, if you read, it's also good for your brain because keep your mind sharp. Um, just you know, find out information that um, that you want to look, you know, learn about, read about. It's just good to you know to read a book sometimes and not watch TV all day. Um, and I said for myself too. You know, take some time to read a book. Um, just, you know, helps you calm down, just helps you be a little more centered. And yeah, so I think it's all it's great for you all the way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that that's so important. And, um, you know, what are we going to do? As we said earlier, um, you're going to go in and talk a little bit about that. Um, what we, you know, as you, into the next bullet that we're going to be talking about. So what are, what are we going to talk about there, Valencia? Yeah, so as you said earlier, we've covered a lot of information this year on various subjects across the industry. Even at Maya and, and the information shared in class, there's so much that cannot be covered in its entirety that referencing other sources could help give you a clearer picture. A good example so, of that is just last week. Go ahead. No, I didn't say anything. Go yeah, ahead. Good a good example of that is just last week with the whole discussion we talked about body positivity and we teach the different we teach the different body types as part of our curriculum but seeing it from a different perspective in the article and campaign on fashion nova it brought some clarity and allowed us to discuss the difference between body size and body type so based on that what are some books that you would suggest for our audience and our followers that you think would help in their development of, um, as well as be of interest? Okay. Well, I do have a few things here. Um, do you mind? I like, I love um, what you said on that particular, um, when we talked about uh, fashion, 
and that whole article and the whole campaign. I wonder how many of our listeners really went and looked up that article to see what that's all about, about body positive, positive. Because as we're sharing this information, we're, we want to help build you up inch by inch, you know what I mean? Um, so that you would have the knowledge that you would have for this industry as far as a model, uh, a beauty a editor or entertainment or wherever you see your yourself in, in, in the interest in those that. So yeah, I do have some books that I want to share, but I really want to make sure they're getting this information that we're giving out there. This information, it's almost like this, Valencia, when, you, when we get ready to share these books and what we shared last week, just like you said, this is a gift, a life gift. When you read, mm -hmm. no one can take that gift from you. It's a gift that lasts a lifetime. It gives you the opportunity to share with people in your industry that I hey, I know my industry. I'm just not a model. I'm just not a singer. I'm not, I'm just not entertaining you. I'm not, not just playing this piano. I have some information about this industry that I'm in. So, but with that being said, it's time for our break and we'll be right back. You're watching the Marlene Cox Show, a show about models for models. Watching the Marlene Cox Show, a show about models for models. And we are back, and we're going to get ready to go over the um, our first selection, our first book. And I went through this when I actually went down to the library. I actually called the library because I really wanted to pick up a lot of these books. So I hope if I'm not pronouncing this right, because the lady said, "Well, how do you pronounce it?" I spelled it for her. She said, "Is it Persiere?" Persia. I, said, I, I said, well, it has to do with Paris. So well, how would you pronounce it, Valencia? Parisian. Parisian. So, I, so yeah. Because she, I said, well, it has, she said, well, what does that mean? I said, well, it has to do with Paris, right? So pull it, but anyway, we had a, a big art, um, we had a big conversation uh, at the library about this. So, okay. So one of the main books, one of the first books that I like to talk about is How to Be Persian wherever you are and it is a handbook of four French ladies and it's a bestseller by the way and it's easy to read about style not fashion with plenty of pictures that demonstrate the topic discussed uh, the topics that are discussed and that and that's very interesting um because they were saying people have and when you go pick the book up and I'm, and the book's going to look this is the way the book cover looks so that is it's all it's black and white it's done in pencil so you can see the book that's when you're looking for the book. That's the way the book is going to look. And, uh, and it says how and, and, it, and it tells you wherever you are. So how you can have that whole Paris um, influence, Pejri, however you want to pronounce it, influence when you're traveling around. But one of the things that is said, uh, it talked to, it had a lot of Bohemian uh, free thinking um, type of fashion. Um, these ladies were saying that people get the misconception that sometimes um, Paris, people in, in Europe, especially Paris, because that's the, the the capital of the world, still considered the capital of the world that introduces fashion. And it's still it's like two, three, four years in advance of introducing different lines. So when we see on the runway last year in Paris, they've already started the new line. It's already for four years ago. So they're always ahead of the um the um, the line for that. So Amy um, Besser, Carlene DiMaggio, Andrew Dawan, and Sophie Mass. Uh, they were the ones who said we must cut through the mist of this um, generosity. Why uh, people think that 
people, the women in Paris, you can be that anywhere you go. So these mar um, women say that they didn't expect to hear just the way you wanted to hear it. So they're not against smoking in bed and all the art policy and culture, making everything look easy and going against the grain. They will take you on a first date. Oh, I love that. They're going to take you on a first date through a hand hangover that they will tell you how to be mysterious and censorious. Um, you know, uh, even if you want to make your boyfriend jealous, they talk about that when you're dealing with fashion, the right way to approach weddings and the gym, and they will share their um, address book in Paris for where to go at the end of the night for a birthday or a smart date for vintage finds and much more. So Valencia, I've talked about a little bit about some of the things that that book's about. What do you, did it, was there anything that you thought quite interested, Valencia, as far as the book? Um, from what I gathered and my information, that's um, interesting to see that um, all of the authors are friends, They're like, like, like friends yes. for a long time. And um, yes. they also have a um, handbook, uh, an address book, for um, where to go in Paris. So that was nice of them to yes. include that in the book as well. Yeah, I like that idea, that address book, where to go into Paris. But I'm gonna tell you what, mm -hmm. keep us both there, please. One of the things that I thought that was so interesting, and I don't think that people got this, they are not against smoking in bed. I, do you understand where that phase was? If you go back into the, four, the I guess 1940s, 50s, and maybe a little bit in the 60s, you would always, if you're looking at the movies, you would always see French, mm -hmm. French, you know, people um, smoking in bed, especially in Paris. They always had those long mm -hmm. cigarettes and they're like, we're not opposed to that. That's not really what we mean. I thought that was really a, a, a cute piece of, um, I said, the readers going to really understand what they mean about that. So smoking in bed. But I think the, the address book for where to go in Paris and I've been there mm -hmm. many times, but I will get that address book. I'm, I'm, they might have some places in there that I've never been to before. So, um, so yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in finding out about that. So the full wit and the self, um, the humor, how to be a Persian explains. I'm, how am I? I don't think I'm pronouncing that right. Parisian. Parisian. I want to say Paris, and it's Parisian. It's not even, yeah, I want to say it's not spelled like Paris. It's got part of Paris in it. Parisians explains those confusing subjects of clothes, makeup, men culture, and lifestyle as they are a true Parisian can. So they're going to explain all that because, you know, over in Paris, Paris, they have, they've been known throughout the world to be number one in all of these things that they, that they're, they're going to be explaining, um, clothes and i love it when we talked about it remember the word we picked up they said fashion but they put up style because fashion is very important coming out of uh, paris but really they they really focus on style what is your mm -hmm. style and that goes back to some of the things that we talked about last week is understanding your body type and shape because if you got to create your style you got to know about your body when you buy that fashion. And I thought, wow, that's, that's really good tie in um, for before that. So, um, so anything before we go on to the next book, I want to make sure if there's anything else you want to add to it um, about that particular book. Um, um, so as far as uh, the address book in Paris for where to go, they have suggestions for uh, where to go at the end of the night for a birthday or a, they call it a smart date. Not sure what that smart date is. <laughs> um, or like you said earlier, a hangover uh, uh, or for vintage finds and many more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got to look up what smart date is. <laughs> when we come back off of this grand finale, let's have a meaning what they're talking about in Paris about what is a smart date. <laughs> I, I'm quite interested on that. So, so many young people go online to date today. I want to know, what does that mean? Uh, are they make, are they checking off the right boxes to get the smart date? <laughs> I, I like to know what that means. I was, I'm was i just curious about that. So that's a, a, a good end. And the next book that I recommend is Millenniums and Gen Zs. It's in style diary. And I, that was very interesting to me because that particular book, um, uh, in style, made up of bloggers. 
a lot of bloggers and um that would be uh, you don't have to but that's what so you know when you're going to look for that book that's what that book looks like you know it's a lot of bloggers in that that age group um they're trendsetters now we that's something we talked about before too trendsetters people actually go to college to get degrees on how to be a trendsetter uh, uh you know a focus what's coming out in, in in fashion so they um online and it's online we talked about that people get the information and in some places that's only the way you're going to get your information is you go online because there's might not be a book or a handout or something like that for you. And then they come from around the world. So that makes it really nice. The bloggers, um, the movers and the shakers in the fashion world aren't sitting in front rows on the runway shows or um, presenting their collection during Faction Week. They are flipping through the racks of vintage. Oh my, uh, Michelle and Mia will love that. Um, vintage stores plundering their parents' closets and scouting eBay for shoes. Those are trends and that's what they're doing. And they are also blogging about their ideas and their finds on the web. Uh, part of the complex network that is breeding ground for ideas for the fashion industry. I like that. Well, you know what? When you really think about it, designers do the same thing. They come up with their collection and we're, we're talking to collect, um, designers, they go back you know, some of them might go back to the 1920s or mm -hmm. uh, they see a neat piece in a vendor shop and they say, ah, mm -hmm. I want to make a collection around that. So that makes sense. And I love the mm -hmm. idea that they're called themselves the movers and the shakers and you will not see them sitting on the runway, um, sitting down for the fashion. And, what, and, you know, on the runway, when you go into the big fashion houses or even fashion shows, I've always looked at that. Um, you will have your fashion editors and beauty editors and different things sitting there. But most of the time is the clients who want to buy the clothing. That's how I always thought of that. Um, you have a mixture, but the majority of those people are who want to see um, what they're going to buy. And then um, I see where they made that statement. They're not sitting there. They're um, flipping through things. And I think that's really important. Um, they are, it's part of a complex network that is breeding ground for ideas for the fashion industry. Style, style that diaries feature nearly 50 of two of the most compelling fashion bloggers. Oh my goodness. In illustration and on book show, uh, showcases, each subject, personal style. We can't get away from that personal style, Valencia. It's all about personal style, style. and the bloggers answer to the question such as what is the best purchase for you for you um what is your best purchase you ever made and now i'm gonna put that question out there to our to our everyone who's watching the marlene cox show what is the best purchase that you've ever made have you ever thought about that valencia um the, one of the best fashion purchases that you've ever made have you ever thought about it mm -hmm. um i can't think of it like on top of my head i i'm not sure because look, a lot of the things that well, I buy. That came, yeah. The thing that came to mind for me, beg pardon? Mm -hmm. Okay. What did you say? I'm sorry. Oh, the thing that came to mind for me was growing up. The thing that my mother used to tell us, always buy your basics, great quality mm -hmm. basics. And um, your dress ensembles where you can take that. Now they turn it into... Um, your your core wardrobe or your castle real wardrobe always buy your basics and that's where i would put most of my money into those basic four pieces that you can turn into about 50 or 60 outfits and then create your own style so that's the first thought that came to mind oh what my mother always told me and then another thing that i thought about when i used to travel a lot with the uh teams that i travel with around the country everyone would come in Valencia with trunks of clothes. Now we were only working these shows. Uh, we would fly in on Friday night, some on Saturday and fly back out on Monday. And I'm telling you, cause you're in the fashion industry, these ladies and men, they would come in with trunks, trunks of clothes just for that little bit of time. Cause we were present. And then they would always look over at me. We only have one suitcase and, but, but you only have one suitcase, but when you get dressed, you miss it out. And that comes from that core pieces and then going in and buying the trend.
can mix and match with those things. I, I really like what they're saying. Um, so the personal mm -hmm. style is the blogger's answer to questions such as what is the best purchase you ever made? What is something that you would never wear? Oh, good question. What, have you ever thought about something you would never wear? Good question. Um, how do you uh, how do you get dressed in the morning and before and before and at night? How do you get dressed in the morning? That's a good factor. You know, how do we do that? And that's a good question to our audience. How do you get dressed in the morning and at night, the night that you go out? How do you pull those things together? Uh, and then they say, by the bloggers are saying, our insight as um, that that these are this would be a fun read for you this summer. This summer, Style Diaries offers reading access to vibrant community of interest, intelli um, intelligent people who may very well be the most influential uh, focus behind tomorrow's trends. That's a good place to start. I'm going to get that one. So that's one on my list I'm going to get. I'm going to really get that one. They say they recommend that particular book for the Gen Zs, um, the Millenniums and the Gen Sties, um, the Style di Diary. But I'm not Millennium. either of those. I'm the baby boom. So I recommend it to me. <laughs> what generation are you in, Millennium? Where are you? Millennium or the Gs? Uh, millennials. It's Millennials. Millennials. So I recommend that book to me, <laughs> but it's a good one for the uh, for the uh, millennials and the Gen Zs. So about the street styles, and they also talk a little bit about street styles and influence. Remember, we talked about that last week or one week. We talked about uh, street styles and influence. The difference between street styles and um, um, what are the, the other ways that people dress? But nowadays, I think because people are walking, we have all these walking shoes and stuff. So we're really creating a lot in the street styles. Anything that you want to add to the street styles that you think is um, really important uh, in the fashion industry right now? Um, street styles. Nothing I can think of right now. But it is time for another break. My goodness, Valencia, really? <laughs> it's that time already? So guys, guess what? You're watching the Marlene Cox Show, and you know you can follow us on um, Thursday nights at 7.30 on our YouTube channel. Go there and subscribe, and follow us on our, our, our Facebook and other social medias. We're out there. We're under the uh, Marlene Cox Show, and we're also out there under Maya Marlene and Talent, and we're also out there under Maya Collectives. So follow us on all of those um, channels so that we can get your feedback and things that you want us to talk about. So it's that time. We're going to go out on a break, and we'll be right back. You're watching the Marlene Cox Show, a show about models for models. When you look at what hair does, hair brings people together. Hair is an expression of ourselves. Hair is an expression of our roots. It's an expression of our future. It's an expression of our artistic capabilities. Hair is everything. Ashte is a combination of my two daughters' names, Ashley and Taylor. We actually started Ashte products on a dare, believe it or not. My wife dared me to go out on my own because I had turned down quite a few offers from other companies. I said, so what are you going to do if you so bad, if you so bad, why don't you start your own blankety blankety company? And he said, that's exactly what I want to do. Just like that. We saw there was a need for a product that took care of this new combination, coined um, Global Texture. You have an African-American father, Hispanic mother, so therefore our daughter's hair represented Global Texture. Here they are in the early 90s with two mixed children who have this hair texture that's like, ¿Qué es esto? What is this? And they needed to find a solution for that. We created Global Texture, therefore, who knew best how to deal with it? Ashtay has a unique blend of amino acids and conditioners and moisturizers that help to deal with the Global Texture market. We impact our customers' lives through education, through them selling retail. Now they're able to have a profitable business, take care of their families, build and create first generational wealth. The education of the stylist to think, to be accountable, to save money, we put that first 
then we sell the product. Most people just look at the stylists differently than we do. We look at them as entrepreneurs and as, as business people who want their kids to have the best education and travel the world and experience the finer things of life. We have thousands of cosmetologists that have saved hundreds of thousands of dollars and they credit us for it and in turn they are extremely loyal to the brand. We truly look at every single one of our clients as they're part of our family. We don't just sell a product, we build relationship. It is our goal to know our customers name by name, person by person, and impact their lives moment by moment. And we're back. You're watching The Marlene Cox Show, a show about models for models. Well, welcome back to the Merlin Cox Show, and I think I'm going to get right into our next book I, um, and, and tell you, don't forget to share, 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 share the show with everyone. And we, um, as we said earlier in the show, just a reminder that this is our season's finale. Reading is fundamental. Fashion must read. So remember that. Hey, Valencia, I'm going to go right over to my next on my list, and I got a surprise book that I want to bring up, too. But our next book, so that'll be three books that we've already shared with our audience. And the next book is uh, Fashion um, uh, Apedia. And it's one of my favorites because it's a fact uh, dictionary. Uh, and it's filled with pictures of different styles and terminology. Um, say you want to find what a particular silhouette looks like or what a particular shape is called and looks like you can find it in this particular book and that you know what i love that one because when they talk about uh lines and different things like that I always think about the basic haircut you know you know you have to know the lines in order to create and i take that you know you, you got to know 45 is here you got to know where zero is you got to know where 80 is you know you got to know all that you got to understand lines and that's a good way models and um designers and designers probably already know that they already know that um and look into that a little bit more so that you can um get the uh, styles and the terminology and valencia you know in my mile and talent agency um and valencia is the educational director at the Maya mile and talent agency you know that we teach terminology just in the fashion industry you got to understand the terminology what do you think the benefit of uh, people understanding the terminology within this industry what do you find to be the benefit of that with the young people that come before you well if you know the terminology you have a leg up above the other people other people in the industry model, other models may not know but this term mean what that term means um so say somebody asks you to do such and such and you know what that word means you'll you, you'll be prepared you know how to do it you know how to do this turn that turn you know what is you know if somebody says you're going to go to a go see you know what that means um so back to the book so what would you say would you say that the fashionpedia is a must read for those that are at the beginning stage of their career i you know valencia i would say both I think in the beginning of their career, it would help. And I think people who are in the career continue. And it's almost like, you know, when you were in elementary school and maybe junior high, you're every, you would have, I remember studying with my kids, they would get a spelling list. You know, you get what, 15 or 20 words a week. And I think whether you're new or you're in it for a while, you need to go through that list and get familiar with those words and how to apply them, how to use them within our industry. And I think you said a good thing. It gives them a, a, gives them a, a heads up, a step up above mm -hmm. everything else in the industry. Yeah. So I would recommend both. I would recommend both. But I told you I had a surprise. Any more questions? I told you I had a surprise. And this is going to be for about that. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say about Go the Fashionpedia. Um, it has a 92% rating on Amazon. There's a lot of good comments about it. It got a lot of good ratings. So yes, yeah, so people should check out that book. And um, it has a lot of details, a lot of pictures. Yeah. So that's all and I you said say. something earlier. You said something earlier today too about all of these books. I mean, it's nice to purchase them, but some people might mm -hmm. can't purchase. But you can go to the library 
libraries are still yeah. up and going all around the country. So if you don't say I'm not, and sometimes I know I'll find a, a new book if it's at the library, I'll read it first. And if it's something I want to add to my collection, I do. So you don't have to go out and purchase all of these books. You can go to the library, what they call public library. We all have them in wherever we live in the, in the United States and go to your library. If you don't have a library card, get your library card and you uh, can take the books out. Okay. So, um, yeah, that, that that was and how what's the percentage rate again on people who have read that book? Well the rating was ninety two percent. The rating on Amazon. 92%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wonder how many yeah. people they, they um put together for that rating. That was that was good. That was really good. But, um mm-hmm. No, I was just gonna say the rating is people who bought the book and then they, you know, put their ratings on the on Amazon. They purchase okay. the book and they then they read it. Yeah, because Amazon sells everything. So I guess that's mm-hmm. where the best place to go to get a rating. And you said 92% of people who bought the book rated the book. Okay. Highly, okay. highly recommend it. Mm-hmm. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. And I, I think that's a, collect, a collectible item. You know, I think that's a collectible item um, for everyone. And before, I think books like that, I love books. How do you feel about books? I love books. I just get grabbed. Sometimes I can just put them around my bed and just look at them and pick out one and read. Sometimes I'm reading two or three books at one time. <laughs> Have you ever done that? No. Nah. I, I just do, I try to do one book at a time, but it takes me a while to, like, sometimes I don't finish what I'm reading, so I have to be better at that. <laughs> yeah, I got to. But magazines, yeah, look, I, have, I do like reading magazines a lot, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love magazines. And I mean, I got boxes of them. I won't give them away. Some of them are old, <laughs> but I just keep them. They're so, uh, they so, but I told you I had a special book and I won't really go into it, but I want to show everyone the designers are going to love this book. This is a special book. And this is one of the, what we call the coffee table book. And this one is called Fashion Design from A to Z. Isn't that a gorgeous book? Look how thick it is. It's a big, thick book. Look at that. Ooh. So from A to Z. So you got a whole lot of reading for that particular book. I just thought I'd add that. But this is one of my books. I love it. <laughs> and I thought, man, I should really share that with people. That's a very good, um, very nice book to get. And you know what? Another thing that we can share with people, too, you can go to the library and get these books. And you can also, um, there in certain parts of the country, I'm quite sure, they have used books. Have anyone ever seen those used bookstores? They look just like a library. They got them in every category, just like a library. That's another place. Um, that's where I started collecting a lot of my books or, or through the years, along with purchasing new ones, but also going to used bookstores. And they, they're in good shape. They don't put them on the shelf, so they're not. So that's a good place. And I even noticed, um, Valencia, when I was going to research all the books that we, t- we share today, that they had the full price of the book, and then they had prices of used books, the same book used. So, yeah, so yeah they, they, um, they, Amazon. They, they, yeah. On Amazon, Amazon they have the, used um, and used books. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Amazon got both, huh? <laughs> so, but I tell you, I, that's a good way. And for me, and uh, I love, and I'm actually, my daughter and I about three weeks ago went to the used bookstore. And, you know, I was like walking. It was like walking in Cinderella's castle, just going through, just love, I just love books. And I mean, and magazines, those are my favorite. I, and I was going in that place with used book. You would have thought that I was at the Taj Mahal somewhere, but I just, cause that love of books, that love of books. So I got to get better too. I'm not where I need to be guys. I used to be better. So this is encouraging me and Valencia to start reading more. So um, I, I, you know, I, I say so. I, yeah, do you want to talk about the fashion history book? Oh, you want me to do that one next? Okay, I didn't. Yeah, keep me on my time. And that particular <laughs> book, I was able to go to the library and get that book from the library, and it disappeared from here. Oh, well, here it is. And that's a, it's a little paperback, and I'm quite sure that you can find this book in hard copy if you like it. Fashion since mm-hmm. 1900. That's a it's a nice book. It, it takes you through the Merlin Monroe years. It takes you from the, you remember the the, um, Cary Grant years? Uh, It just takes you all the way through 
the different years, the Roaring Twenty, um, fashion sense, and that history. That's a good history book. Um, it's really fascinating reading. Again, it's full of pictures and it's a uh, chronological order. Really a good, and this is the paperback, and um, this is all they had at the library. But if you want, if you're a person who likes to have the uh, hard copy, you can look for that. And as Valencia said, Amazon. We got to call Amazon, and tell them we put some pointers in there for them. Um, so it's a, it's a very good book. Um, one of the most interesting aspects of fashion is to me has always been textiles. Um, so um, before I get into that, I'll get into textiles. Anything you want to share with our audience about the fashion history since 1900? Um. And like you said, um, I saw that the chapters were organized around different shifts in style and major world events. Um, and it has exci talks about exciting advances in fashion and this place within the social, economic, political, and cultural context. Oh, wow. Yeah. Thank you. Political content. That's so important. That's that's you just gave a mouthful right there. Just what you said just there would make me go out and want to read that book <laughs> because a lot of people don't understand that fashion has a lot to do with uh, political influence. What do I mean by that? If the country is going through a hard time, the fashion represents that. The clothes are not much bright colors and they're more drabby. If the times if in between, fashion represents that. If we're going through the time when money is plentiful, fashion up, um, represents that. You know, like when the Roaring Twenties came out, the country was swinging and doing things different. So uh, fashion and politics say a lot not only the times the chronological times but it also says a lot about people in different positions whether you're in corporate america whether you in um whether you in uh, federal government so you're working at the white house the pentagon the what you wear in those places make a statement you just you're not going to, to work in the white house with your back out you know, you're not going to the white, you shouldn't, people will do whatever. You're not going to work in the White House with your shirt, with a mini skirt all the way up there. You know, so you, it, fashion and politics dictate how we dress. So that, that's a, I like that. And I'm hoping. Well, you get to, um, textiles. Wear, okay. Yeah, yeah, go I'll, I'll go into my uh, textiles. I was going to say, before you do yes. the textiles, it's time for, time for another break. You're kidding me. Do we need two hours or what? <laughs> I'm on a roll here. <laughs> okay, so it's, a, it's another break. Okay, so we, and then I'll come right back and get on textile. Remember, you're watching the Marlene Cox Show, and you can um, find us on Roku TV, WBGR. Go to WBGR TV, and you can find the Marlene Cox Show on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. You can find us on Thursdays at 7.30 on our YouTube channel, The Marlene Cox Show at 7.30. And then you can also find us on social media. Go to all of our social media links under the Maya Ma, uh, Marlene um, brand and also Maya Collectives. So uh, we're getting ready to go out on a break. I got to stop. I'm going on our next break. <laughs> You're watching the Marlene Cox Show, a show about models for models. and Posey. Seize the moment with Rita. Inhale the intimacy. Shop now. Go to our website at wallaceposey.com. And we're back. You're watching The Marlene Cox Show, a show about models for models. 
And we are back. And as I said, we're going to go right into an, an, another book, um, The Art of Manipulating Fashion. Um, I'm very interested in this one, this, this particular book, and I'll tell you why. One of the most interesting aspects of fashion to me was always has always been textiles and color. I got to add color to that. So if you're a designer or a concierge of, fat, of style, you will really enjoy reading The Art of Manipulating Fabrics. I love that. I was so fascinated at the age of 24. I was uh, I had the honor to go and study on textiles and color and fashion manipulations and understanding wools and tweeds and colors and how to manipulate those fashions. The, the That's when we were doing a lot of the 100% of that or linens and how not only to manipulate them into, because, um, uh, you know, a lot of these things, they come wood, you know, they come from cotton balls and different things. And then they turn all of that into a textile and then how to work colors, how to really work with colors to color those textiles once you got them into a format of what we see in the stores of uh, rolls of fashion it took work to get it to that point so um and, and I'm, I'm i've always been interested in the textiles and coloring even in my field of cosmetology that was really one of my areas of expertise is uh coloring i loved it all but that would you know you have your expertise and when we would do the shows um you had different people doing different things and i had this girlfriend she's out of rochester she's the best cutter I've ever seen in my life cut some hair. She said, she said, you, you want to cut this? I said, mm -mm. I'll call her. You cut. The girl just had an edge on that and having that opportunity to go to Paris to study that uh, was amazing to me. It uh, was amazing thing um, about the art of manipulating fashion in the book. It's um, it's, a, it's a good, it came out in October 1996 and it says the possibility of these dimensional manipulations of fat fabric, gathering, pleating, tucking, shining, Quilting, woving materials are seemingly endless. Describe them all would be to describe the entire history of what? Sewing, something I never wanted to do. I never wanted to sew. I never wanted to learn to sew. And for someone who never wanted to learn to sew, I really like getting into the text, the textiles, the art of manipulating fabric. So that's what the book looks like. So when you get that book, um, you'll see that book and go ahead and get that um, on on doing that um, on making. You know, people think they pick up a piece of thing and they see a pleat in it and they think it just happened. There's an art and a craft to that. You know, there's an art and a craft to these materials that we use now today to stretch and stuff. You know, um, there's an art to um, synthetic blends. There's an art to make those natural fabrics work with the synthetic. So anyway, so anyway, Valencia, go ahead and, and tell me what we're going to do with these magazines. Okay. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I often thumb through a lot of magazines on fashion. I found those particularly interesting. Um, so I'll just talk about the magazines. So we have um, Vogue magazine, Harper's Bazaar, and In Style, and Vogue in a second, Vogue, also known as American Vogue or simply Vogue, is a monthly fashion and lifestyle magazine. It covers news, it's covers style news, including hot couture, fashion, beauty, culture, Ooh. living, and runway. And then we have Harper's Bazaar, and that was America's um, first fashion magazine. And it was first published in New York City on November 2nd, 1867, as the weekly Harper's Bazaar. So I'm not going to go into too much on that. Let's take a time. And the last one we have is In Style. And In Style is an American monthly women's fashion magazine that was founded in 1994. It was in print for until um, 2002, February of 2002. Um, Style, and Style announced that it would stop printing and go digital format only, which I am sad about that. So I don't really like, I'm more of a hands-on reader, like to turn the pages. So yes. it lost me as a customer, yes. unfortunately, but <laughs> it's still a good magazine if you like digital. <laughs> I, I, someone said they were going to have a few copies at the circulating before the year's out. I don't know. I just saw that mm. on a, a fashion um, newsletter. 
that would be nice. I'm a, I love my magazines. I love to sit there. But you gave some history there, too. You know, even though the Marlene Cox show and my co-hosting with me, Valencia, we talk about fashion and things in the industry. We also educate people about the field that they're in. And you said something about a Harper's Bazaar. When was that first published again? I heard it. But when was that first published again? In 18... Uh, 1867. Wow. 1867. And that was the first. That's amazing. And that was in so New Ms. York. Marlene. Yeah, Miss Marlene. So yeah. before we get into uh, tips and trends, is there anything that you want to say about um the next Andre Tally? Because it's almost that time. It's pretty much that time oh, now. But yeah. if anything else well, want I won't really go into a lot about Andre Tally, but look, let me tell you, he was one of the first he was the first um uh, 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 uh person to drove the cover and an editor of Vogue, not a Vogue, American Vogue, French Vogue. Um, I had the opportunity to know him in life. He is so very missing. I know you guys remember Andre. Uh, oh my God, amazing, amazing. We're gonna do a segment when we come back in September on him. He was amazing. So go out and get his uh, memoir to read this, um, this summer. I'm gonna go read that. Because even though I've had pieces of articles and things in the paper, um, we just want to talk about uh, Mr. Andre Leon Talley. And uh, he's, he's, he's dearly missed. We miss you. We miss you so much. Your presence on the main stage is so missed. Um, so thank you for all that you've done for this industry. And um, as far as subscribing to magazines, as you said, um, I was I would try to get a subscription and Valencia some of those subscriptions you can get on um, online do you subscribe when you get them online or are they just up there free you mean you get them online magazine you mean like digital if I go to style do I still have to pay a fee it's, it's you subscribe free? you pay a fee to, it's, okay. you pay a fee, pay a fee. but um, okay so you yeah so you know what time it is now well, it's time for <laughs> tip and trends. We're ready. Let's do it again. Time for tip and trends. Here we go. Here we go. In fact, if I'm somewhere and I can say Blair Waldorf would never do that, guess what? I'll do it. Okay, so the first um, this is a tips I would say is the first video is about the Chanel book, you know the Chanel, um, Chanel designer, and it's the complete collections, and that book is about fifty dollars on Amazon. So here's the video for you. Yeah. So you can let me know what you thought about that um, the video, and I recommend that you get that book, and then. Um, and it goes into this, the book explores the collections chronologically and it goes into the designer's um, inspired reinvention of the classic Chanel elements from season to season. And then the second video is called Fashion Book Re Recommendation, recommend, I'm sorry, Fashion Book Recommendations. In this video, you'll see it features Dior, a book called The Little Dictionary of Fashion, and some more books. Mm -hmm. So check those out and let us know what you think in the comments. And now back All to you. Right. Oh, right. I like that little dictionary of fashion. So we're going to go ahead and go ahead into um, right now. We're going to go ahead and get into around town. Is it that time to do around town? So we're going to go ahead and do around town. And um... so we're going to get into around town, which is a, which is a very good thing for us to start getting into since we're going to be um, doing around town in July. And um, we'll come back when we come back in September and tell you about all the great things that we did through the summer and we're going to share. So keep your little diaries, have your book lists together and make sure you go to the Marlene Cox show and um, put your name in there if you would, and let us know what books that you read. So we want we got a, a Saturday, January the 29th around town, um, Valencia from 6 to 9 p.m. It's the Runway International Show. And it is join, it'll join us at the um, GQ 
um, Palace Runway International Show will be host the biggest international fashion show in the industry working party in the DMV. And it says to you, dress to impress your fellow fashion tees. So be there to that one and look it up. Um, and that's um, Saturday, this Saturday, the, the 29th. And then uh, the one that I'm um, the reason why the international fashion network industry, um, you want to go to the Q, um, Q, um, GQ Palace. Uh, it was the first fashion industry party. And they also have what they call a Halloween party. And I think something else that I was really interested in was for the summer. Okay, you got something happening around town June the 30th. Uh, the residents in Arlington Capital View Hotel. And it's going to welcome summer in. It's going to have a fashion show um, on Sunday, June the 30th. Um, and so go into Arlington and view that at the Capital View Hotel uh, for another af afternoon of a fabulous something to do to help you along with your reading. And then after we do that, we're going to um, they have VIP tickets um, for attending seats um, sitting in the front row. So there's a lot of activities going on around um, going on for you guys to visit doing that and because you won't see us in july we want to say saturday july the 27th we want to invite you to electrify an event in the dmv get ready to be part of empowering experience that will bring our community together like never before mark your calendars and prepare to be amazed meet our nominees and they have a, a lot of nominees i'm not quite familiar with all of them um there's going to be a celebrity host jazz by Linus, and um, powered by dj splash Lash, and is at the um the group hotel rate rate for the hotel is 219 dollars and, and I'm trying to remember where the hotel is, but if you need to get more information, go to the Marlene Cox Show YouTube channel and let us know if you need more information. The tickets, the VIP tickets are uh, $125 and it's going to have um, hors d'oeuvres and it's going to be a lot of things going on. And that's on July the 27th. And we will put the links to those uh, on the Marlene Cox show. If you go to our YouTube channel and the link will be there so you can get more information. And Valencia, that's what we have for around town. Mm -hmm. So since this is our last show of the season, please join us next season as we kick off another season with fresh and exciting topics with industry artists, talent and experts about what's happening in and around the industry wow so that's our when we come back guys be looking for us and make sure any show that you miss go to the marlene cox show youtube channel subscribe and pick up on all the shows um look at the ones you want to read listen to again and go to that so it is about that time and we're going to say good night and it is each day is a blank canvas and you are the earliest with every stroke of your brush your thoughts and your acts you have the opportunity to make this day your best work so make this day your greatest masterpiece and we will see you in september um this is our grand finale get the books and we will see you then god bless you and stay safe valencia we will be talking soon and enjoy your summer and guys good night <laughs> goodbye and we will see you soon <laughs>